Hello, uh, my name is Rafael Juste. I'm a professor of neuroscience at Columbia University, and I'm also the director of the Neurotechnology Center. And I'm sorry I cannot be there with you today, but I wanted to give a few remarks discussing what is uh, this business of neural rights and uh, why do we need them? Uh, first, let me uh, tell you um, a little bit about neurotechnology. So what is neurotechnology? Neurotechnology are devices and methods that can do two things. They can either be used to measure the activity of the brain or to change the activity of the brain. So these devices can be electrical, uh, like brain computer interfaces that you can either wear on top of your head or be inserted inside your, your brain uh, with invasive uh, neurosurgery. Uh, they can also be optical, magnetic, uh, acoustical, um, chemical, uh, um, based on nanotechnology. There are many different types of devices. So uh, why is neurotechnology important? Well, it turns out that the brain is not just another organ of the body. The brain happens to be the organ that generates all the mental and cognitive activities of humans. So it's the site of our minds. And because of that, methods to get into the brain, to record brain activity or to change it, by definition, could allow to get into the mind, record the mental activity and change mental activity. You know? um, these methods are being developed throughout the world, particularly in the last two decades, for reasons that are scientific, to try to understand how the brain works. This is the kind of thing that we do in our laboratory, but also for reasons that are medical, to try to help patients that suffer from brain diseases, either mental or um, neurological diseases. And I'm sure every one of you has family members or friends that suffer from these brain diseases. So with these new methods to get into the brain and be able to find out what's wrong with the brains of patients and help cure them. So neurotechnology is in an explosive growth phase now, thanks to the launching of the US Brain Initiative by President Obama in 2013. So this initiative employs over 550 laboratories in the US and around the world and has been followed by many initiatives uh, of similar caliber in China, Japan, Europe, Australia, Canada, Israel. So you can imagine uh, South Korea, that the whole world is involved in this uh, race to build better neurotechnology for the scientific and medical reasons, but also for commercial reasons, because access to brain data could revolutionize the tech industry. Uh, in fact, we've estimated that now most of the investment going into neurotechnology is coming from the private sector. So this is fantastic. So why are we worried about this? Well, uh, we're worried because again, the brain is not just another organ of the body and this technology can offer the opportunity to, to decode and manipulate mental activity. Is this science fiction? It's not science fiction. In laboratories like myself, we've been doing this routinely with laboratory animals like mice, where we can implant uh, uh, artificial images in the heads of mice and control their behavior. They essentially behave as if they're seeing these images that they're not really seeing, that we're actually putting into their brains with neurotechnology. What we can do in a mouse today, you can do in the future in a human. Uh, also, the big uh, investments in new technology are paying off. And almost every day there's new reports of uh, successes in brain decoding, particularly in patients. Just about uh, 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 not so long ago, a team from UCSF led by Eddie Chang, who's actually a colleague of, of mine, an excellent uh, neurosurgeon, was able to decode uh, speech from a paralyzed patient from uh, using recordings of uh, brain activity. And also they even built an avatar of the person, of the face of the person with all the facial expressions. 
So this just shows you what you can do today. So the power of neurotechnology um, made a group of us in 2017 think very hard about the ethical and societal consequences of neurotechnology. And we came up with the idea of new types of human rights that we call neuro rights or brain rights to protect brain activity uh, from the abusive use of neurotechnology. So we highlighted the five uh, neuro rights, the right to our mental privacy, the right to our own identity, to our own self, the right to our own freedom, our own liberty when we make decisions, our own agency, and finally, the right to equal access to neuro augmentation and also the right of protection from biases of the algorithms used by neurotechnology in the brains of humans. So the, the group, uh, the Morningside group, we published this paper in Nature in 2017, and this group was made by 25 experts representing all the brain initiatives from all over the world and having also representation from experts in neurosurgery, neurology, uh, researchers like myself, ethics, law, artificial intelligence, etc. Since then, uh, we've been in a campaign uh, to push, we and other people, to push the idea that we need new types of uh, human right level protection for brain activity and the information that comes from it and working with uh, several countries, particularly with the Republic of Chile. Uh, Chile changed its constitution, made a uh, constitutional amendment to protect, protect brain activity and its information. And there are similar constitutional amendments um, going on in Brazil, in Mexico, and there is interest also in Spain. And uh, we've also worked uh, with the UN, with the Human Rights Council in Geneva to consider adding extra protection for mental privacy to some of the uh, most important uh, human rights treaties in the UN. So this is just some of the things that are going on. I encourage you to take this issue very seriously. Uh, we're really making decisions that could have a huge influence in the future of humanity. And I encourage you to think that the brain is not just another organ, that is the organ that makes you who you are. And because of this, it deserves extraordinary levels of protection. Thank you.